Hello, George Roman is here. Welcome to Fundamentals of Weather and Climate playlist. In today's video, we are going to define air pressure, air density, how these two variables are related and how they change with the altitude in our atmosphere. Let us first start with air density. Density of anything is usually denoted with small Greek rho and it represents mass of some substance divided by the volume. Or we usually say mass is M, volume is capital V. So let us take a cube of air. I will just put it here in two dimensions, but remember this goes in three dimensions. And let's say that here we have a lot of molecules and atoms of air in this cube. Of course, we know from my previous lectures that 78% of these is nitrogen N2, 21% oxygen O2, and 1% other gases, mostly argon. If you would measure mass of all these molecules and atoms, and then divide by the volume of this box, perhaps one cubic meter, if this is one meter box, then you would get density of air. And typical value of air density close to the surface of the earth is 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. So if you take one cubic meter of air and somehow you could weigh it, mass would be 1.2 kilograms. Another concept I would like to define here is weight. As you will see, Weight is a force, and weight is defined as mass times a certain constant g. And this constant g has value 9.81 meters per second squared. Or, in these notations, this would be mg. Any object in our gravitational field has weight. My weight exerted on the floor of this building is my mass, 96 kilograms, times this constant 9.81. And finally, let us now relate this weight to the concept of pressure. Pressure is defined as force per area. In terms of atmospheric pressure, we are interested in weight of air divided by the area. Or you can see we could define it as mg divided some area divided by some area A. Now I will make a few plots that hopefully will demonstrate the meaning of these quantities in the atmosphere. Let us say that here we have surface of the Earth. Gravity on our planet pushes everything towards the center of the planet. You, me, this camera, as well as these molecules and atoms of air. Subsequently, if we could visualize then what is happening here, then we would have a lot of molecules and atoms of air being concentrated very close to the surface of the Earth. And then as we are moving up, this is vertical direction up, we start having less and less. I hope you can visualize this, and this is beautiful. This is what is happening in our atmosphere. So you can also now see, if I take this cube, if I take this cube and I place it here, I will have a lot of molecules and atoms in that cube. But if I place that cube over here, there will only be perhaps two atoms or molecules. Or if I place this cube over here, 
or over there, you can see that the mass of molecules and atoms of air decreases as I'm moving this cube upwards. But the volume of the cube is the same, so consequently, what we have is that the density of air decreases with height. And this decrease is the following. I will, in this course, use small z to indicate vertical direction. So if I place here density of air, let's put it in red, rho, then from surface value, a let surface value be this, perhaps 1.2 kilogram per cubic meter, density exponentially decreases with the height. That is very, very rapid increase. And if you look into this schematic over here, you will notice it is not linear. Exponential means that the rate of change is proportional to the point from which you start measuring that rate of change. Now, how about pressure? Well, pressure is weight of air in a column stretching from Earth's surface all the way to the top of the atmosphere. So if I take here a column like so, and let's say this column has area A, and quite often that area A for convenience is one square meter, so that's this area over here, then weight, mass of all these molecules times this constant G divided by that area is pressure. Pressure is therefore force by area. Pressure of air is exerted on everything, you, me, and that pressure is very, very high because force is high. Weight of air from the surface to the top of the atmosphere can be like 10 cars stacked on top of each other. So the question is how is, the, how is it that we are not crushed by that pressure? Well, our body also has molecules and atoms and they are pushing back to the atmosphere and we evolved on this planet where our cells evolved to sustain that atmospheric pressure. If you, if you go deep under the ocean, then you, not, you did not evolve for such high pressure and you will collapse over there. But that doesn't happen in the atmosphere. However, you can feel change of pressure. You do not feel pressure if you are a healthy person right now, maybe. But if pressure suddenly changes, you can feel it. And you know that when you fly, you don't feel pressure. But once the pressure decreases as the aircraft goes up, you can feel it in your ears. Or when you start landing, your ears start popping. That's the pressure change that your body feels. As, you can, as we can see, because the pressure is force divided by area, most of the molecules and atoms of air are concentrated close to the surface. So the pressure exhibits the largest change close to the surface and then less and less as we go up. So if you allow me to plot here next to density, if I plot pressure difference between surface of the Earth and top of the atmosphere, then that trend would be, if this is surface value of pressure, pressure would also exponentially change with the height, just like density. And in fact, because density is changing exponentially with height, pressure has to change as well because it is related to the mass of atoms and molecules and these, these masses are not equally distributed as you can see in this plotting. I don't want to dwell too much on this. I think this is now very well explained. What I would like to do though is show you a nicer picture of this what I often like to do at the end of my lectures, so you can see me plotting it, but you can also see much nicer representation. Here is pressure and density increasing from left to right. Here is altitude in kilometers. And you can see the dotted line is air density, full line is air pressure. Both of them are exponentially decreasing with height. I also added here a separation between homosphere and heterosphere, 
from my previous video. So you can see that homosphere extends up to 8100 kilometers above Earth's surface, but I covered that in my previous video. If we look closer into the change of pressure with height, again, air pressure in millibars, I would like to mention something, though, that I forgot, and that is the following. This unit of millibar, one millibar is equal one hectopascal, or that is also 100 pascals. I would like you to know this because pascal is official unit that we use for pressures, whereas millibar is something that we often use in atmospheric sciences to report pressure to the general public. So this is the relationship between millibar and pascal, which is of course SI unit. Now going back to this graph, so air pressure in millibars or hectopascals, and then y axis is altitude. We can see that pressure is exponentially decreasing with height. At 5.5 kilometers, pressure is half of the value of the surface pressure. Surface pressure, standard surface pressure is around 1000 millibars. More formally, it's 1013.25 millibars. But if we start with 1000, that's a nice round number, then 500 millibars is observed at 5.5 kilometers above Earth's surface. And then we can see that pressure really fastly decreases with height. From my previous video, from my previous slide, sorry, you also saw that pressure is related to the mass of air. So when pressure is half of the value of the surface pressure, that means half of the mass of the atmosphere is above that level, half of the mass of the atmosphere is below that level. So pressure of 100 millibars is approximately at 18 or so kilometers. That means only 10% of the mass of the atmosphere is above that height and 90% of the mass of the atmosphere is below 18, 19 kilometers. 10 millibars is at approximately 32 kilometers or so. That means only 1% of the mass of our atmosphere is above this height. Everything else is below that height. So you can see now, visualize how the concentration of molecules and atoms of air changes with height. Most of them are so closely together below approximately 30 or so kilometers that 99% of the atmosphere's mass is in this layer and only 1% is above. And you can see that approximately 48 kilometers above surface, we only have one millibar, one hectopascal of pressure. Just to relate this to my previous video where I talked about atmosphere of other planets, I told you that pressure on the surface of the Mars is very, very weak, approximately 7 hectopascals. And as you can see, you have to go to approximately 37 kilometers above Earth's surface to get the same pressure that you would exhibit at the surface of the Mars. I would also like to emphasize here that the concentration of air in terms of the gases that are making air is not different in the first 80 to 100 kilometers. That's why homosphere extends up to those heights. So that means if you are climbing Mount Everest or any other uh, very high mountain, you might need assistance for breathing tanks with oxygen, but not because composition of air changed. It is still 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% other gases. What is happening is you do have 21% oxygen, but there is not much of it. Air density is so low that when you inhale volume of air, it does have 21% oxygen, but there is not much oxygen and you cannot survive, so you need assistance. 
So to conclude, in today's video, we learn what is air density, what is air pressure, how pressure density mass are related, how these quantities change with the height in the atmosphere, and we also learn some interesting facts about Earth's atmosphere and distribution of mass and pressure. Until next video, goodbye.